Welcome to Nani Notes. Today, we're going to find surface area and volume of a regular right prism. Now, the prism in our example has bases that are nonagons. Hey, that's kind of cool. Uh, we wanted it to be non-trivial. So um, I want you to imagine, take this polygon right here, or, sorry, this prism, and well, let's flatten it out. You know, like we're, like we cut it all out and we flattened it, we would produce something called nets. Use your imagination a little bit there. You can see that, well, you've got these two bases. These are, well, base here, base here, or right there. And these are the sides. These are those rectangular sides. Nonagon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight, nine sides, nine rectangles. Hey, that makes sense. Now, um, just to be clear, I'm looking at this figure right here and uh, it has a height of five. It's got a radius of three. So, um, and again, if I look at it, I've got a nonagon on the top, a nonagon on the bottom. And I want to make this one other thing clear that we call this a right prism. And that's because it's not like this. If I shear this prism like this, see, it's got the same height, but it's no longer a right prism. As you can see, those other sides are not necessarily rectangles. Most of them are, are parallelograms. One or two of them could be rectangles, but that is not what we're talking about. We're just going to say you took that hexagon or whatever shape it was, nonagon here, and you extruded it. You pulled it straight up, um, and it looks like that. Okay, enough playing. Let's get to business here. Um, I want you to imagine. Well, we're going to take the area that I'm going to add up these two bases and I'm going to add up all these sides. This is surface area. Now, LA stands for lateral area. That's, the, that's those rectangles. Capital B is for bases. Now, oh, we'll get to this. Why this prism or why the, the base of a regular polygon has an area of one half apothem times perimeter. Oh, well, you, you probably already know, but we'll circle back to that. I do a little bit of algebra, and I've got that. Now, I could do this. I could factor out the P, and, well, I don't know. This is, starts to lose its meaning there, but I think this level, this this is more intuitive. But we'll we'll just we'll use our algebra skills to simplify it to this expression. Then let's look at volume. We find the area of the base and we just multiply it times the height. Easy squeezy. <laughs> okay, so we got a regular nonagon. I guess we're going to have to revisit something about regular polygons. Regular polygons, equilateral and equiangular. Every regular polygon has a radius. Now, the radius, well, that's the radius of this circle that you could circumscribe about the polygon. It's another way of saying it, but polygon is inscribed inside that circle. Now, Every regular polygon has an apothem, and that is, well, it's a segment connected to the midpoint of any of the sides, and it's the radius of the inner circle. You could say that circle is inscribed inside the polygon. Hey, that's pretty cool. So look at that. You've got circles on the outside, and circles on the inside. Pretty neat. 
But what we are going to focus on is this. Every one of these has a right triangle associated with it that's going to relate the apothem to the radius to the side. Every one of them. All right. Now, some of them, you really don't need this formula because, let's face it, you've got the square, side squared, right? And some of you probably know this as well for your equilateral triangle. And you probably derived that a different way. You sure did if you're in my class. And then maybe you took that formula and multiplied it by 6 because you said, hey, hexagon, heck, it's just, you know, six equilateral triangles. So those three of the regular polygons do have special formula. But, you know, you can always use this one. This works for all of them, including those special three. The area of any regular polygon is one half the apothem times the perimeter. Hey, we're going to review why, because really, the area of, the, the, of this regular polygon is about 90% of this exercise. Okay, so we're going to say base. In this case, we picked a nonagon. Now, um, I've only got one dimension here, S. We actually are not given S in this case. We are given the radius. Now, think about this. Imagine if I draw two adjacent radii. You can see I'm carving out a triangle. Now, imagine then if I took another triangle. Huh. I could just go all the way around this figure and say, hey, this figure is just made up of nine of those triangles. Now, I know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. Okay, so I, if I knew this, which happens to be the apothem, the height of the triangle is the apothem of the polygon. If I found the area of this triangle and multiplied by nine, I have the area of the polygon. And that's where this formula comes from, the one-half AP. Because, I'm going to say, wait a minute. If you stack up all of these triangles together, see, all of these bases, the base of any one of them is S, the side. But if I combine them all, that's the perimeter. So, one half base times height times nine, or in this case, one half apothem times perimeter. That's pretty slick. So, we're going to stick with that. You see, by using this formula, the one half AP, then you don't have to keep track. Well, then I guess you do know how many sides because you need that to, um, to find the perimeter. <laughs> But um, it's just a cute way of saying it, in a universal way. All right, let's, let's clean this up a little bit. Let's get rid of that. Now, the central angle. Let me make this, oh. Let me make that a little bit bigger. The central angle in a regular polygon is 360 divided by n. That's the angle between any two adjacent radii. Now, I'm going to draw a triangle down here that I like to call the ABR triangle. And I'm going to say, because A is for apothem. I like that. Now, B, okay, I made that up. B, I, I just have to use a different variable because um, it's really half of the side. See, so A is apothem. And I want to point something out. See, we know for a fact by hypotenuse leg, these two triangles are congruent.
So the A, the apothem, is going to be a, is also going to be an angle bisector. Now, of course it is, and that's going to give us the 20 degrees right there. Right? Half of 40 is 20. And you see where we're going with this. Or maybe you remember it from your previous, lex uh, your previous lesson. Well, let's, let's get to work. We're going to use our trig. Sokatoa. We are going to say that relative to this, this 20 degrees, B is the opposite side. A is apothem, but A is also, stands for adjacent. Hey, that's pretty convenient. Let me move that out of the way. So A apothem, A adjacent. B is opposite, and the radius is going to be our hypotenuse. All right, now we were given the radius. This is the only thing, only one measurement we know. Remember with trig, we have an angle. We only need one of the three measurements for our right triangle to find the other two. In this case, we know the radius. That'll probably be the most common situation. And now, I'm going to say, uh, what do we got here? Oh yeah, I already got that. Sokotoa, I'm going to say that the cosine, ka, adjacent over hypotenuse. The cosine of 20 degrees is A over 3 meters. Why 3? Well, that was given. I suppose I should write that down, but, well, you got that. That's 3 meters. Now, Opposite over hypotenuse, that's the sine. So the sine of 20 is B over the hypotenuse, which is 3 meters. Now both of these, were, well, we're going to solve them. We'll multi we multiply both sides of both equations by the number 3. And I'm going to flip them left to right using the symmetric property. So the apothem is 3 cosine of 20 meters. And B, which is half a side, is 3 sine of 20. Well, if that's B, like we always say BS, well, S would be 6 sine of 20. And perimeter, well, 6 times 9, 54. So I can represent the perimeter as 54 times the sine of 20 degrees. And this is all we need to um, calculate both the surface area and the volume. Remember, we, got, we only had two measurements going into this. We had the radius and we had the height. So let's go ahead and substitute these. So remember, we've got the radius of 3 meters. We have a height of 5 meters. And we're, we're going to use these two. We'll use these two formula. I mean, honestly, you could, if you're not comfortable with this, you could use, you could um, say 2 times the base plus um, lateral area. But we'll do our substitution. And let's see how it comes out. Again, over here, I'm going to take my apothem plus the height, and I'm going to multiply it times my perimeter. Hey, let's do this. Let's do that one first. So I'm going to say 20 cosine 20 times 3, and I'm going to add 5 to it plus 5 equals. I'm going to multiply it times. I'm going to multiply times 54 sine of 20. So I might as well just multiply times 54 times 20 sine equals 144 and 4 tenths.
well, if we're going to the nearest tenth, 144.4. Well, do we have, let's put that down, 44.4. So, and those would be square meters. And let's, over here, we'll just work out the, uh, we're going to work out one half apthem times perimeter times the height. And again, we've got apothem, we've got perimeter, we've got height. All right, this is all good. And we could do a lot of things. We could multiply, you know, we could take care of the coefficients first or the trig first. Let's just do this. I'm going to do 20 cosine times 20 sine. That's sine times co sine of 20 times cosine of 20. Now let's get rid of all the constants. Now I'm going to say times, now in our particular order, 5 times 54 times 3 divide by 2 equals 130.2 square meters, cubic meters. All right, and um, well, let's verify that one. I wasn't sure how I, or again, you could just, you could take all these, all, no, all right, what I would normally do is like divide this out, you know, 27. So let's, let's just do that again to verify. Half 54 is 27, so I'm gonna take 27 times three times five times cosine of 20 times sine of 20. And there it goes, 130.2 cubic meters. So 